Hey guys, number one Marmaduke fan here. So I've been watching more anime while I work, so I thought we'd do a quick off-the-cuff review of Dojin Work, uh, which is a sort of slice-of-life series based on a four-panel comic uh, manga series by Hiro Yuki. So uh, four comma, it's sort of like the equivalent in Japan of, you know, newspaper comic strips in the West. One panel, two, three, that sets up the gag. The fourth panel's the gag. So what that means is in the anime format, it's continual, it's continual gags throughout the thing. And then each of the gags, each of the mini strips, uh, builds up into a larger story. So uh, I, the, my review of this series is it's going to completely depend on whether you are interested in the description. Of it. So I went into this expecting it to be a slice of life anime about uh, amateur manga creators, and I'm 100% interested in the doujinshi market. So I was kind of hoping, oh, maybe if I watch this, I'll I'll learn about what doujinshi is like. And that is true that uh, the characters participating in doujinshi is central to the plot. But uh, that's you're not gonna like if you think, oh, I'll learn about doujinshi doing this. Eh. That, that isn't what I got. So what it really is, is it's a continual series of sexual innuendo jokes throughout the entire thing. So if you don't think you would like that, you probably won't like Dojin work. I actually thought it was pretty cleverly written. Uh, so I'll, I'll comment on how they do sexual humor in Dojin, Dojin work. So uh, a lot of the sexual humor, uh, it's not just sex for the sake of sex. There's a really great ironic element to how they do sexual humor. And they're not too in your face about it. So once she starts, once the main character starts participating in the do, the doujinshi world, obviously one of the big things that gets published in the doujinshi space is pornography. That's not all of it, but that's like a big part of the market. So uh, the the gag of the main character is she's a little goody two shoes. She's very concerned about her reputation and not having anyone think that she's a she's a pervert. But then when she finds out people can make big money selling doujinshi, she decides to become a do, doujinshi artist purely for money. And she decides she'll draw porn because that's one of the biggest sellers. So she claims, oh, I'm only doing it to make money. I'm only doing it uh, as, as a because it's a good business practice. But what we suspect throughout the series is that she's, sec she's secretly a pervert and a hypocrite. And her goody two-shoe girl act is just something she, she has to keep Keep up appearances. It's not who she really is. So, of course, when the comedic hijinks ensue and, you know, she trips and spills all her manga out and everybody sees what a degenerate she is, it's funny because she's a hypocrite and she's being found out. Uh, there's another weird thing where the age of the character... The age of the characters tricked me. I thought they were supposed to be high school girls at first because of how they look. But later, with context clues, you find out they're supposed to be college students. And I guess that's that's a little less weird. The, the whole series is weird because sexual innuendo is the main premise of the humor of the in, entire series. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about another running gag in, in this series because it, it'll give you an idea of what what you're in for. So one of the uh, secondary characters is called J Justice, and he's like an older college guy. He's a famous doujinshi artist. He's well-renowned for, you know, drawing excellent work. And as his name would suggest, his name is Justice. He cares about virtue and honesty. Uh, there are several plots where uh, there's a comedic misunderstanding where the girl says one thing and he assumes, oh no, that means that someone is uh, molesting them. I must protect them, right? So he's kind of like a white knight who's concerned about girls' chastity and honor and old school values. And the running gag of his just his character is that everybody thinks he's a pedophile and, and nobody sa says it. So the reason everybody thinks Justice is a pedophile is his best friend is like this little girl who's very protective of him and keeps saying, I'm going to marry Justice when, when I grow up. And... <laughs> Okay, so I think it's funny. You might not think think it's funny. The reason I think it's funny is the the series never says whether or not he really is a pedophile. I actually think it's funnier if he's not a pedophile. He really is like this old school samurai guy who cares about virtue and honor, <laughs> and everybody assumes this about him without anyone ever telling him. So all, all and all of the gags are sort of innuendo or comedic misunderstanding gag. So someone will say one thing, uh, people will assume another thing about them. Uh, the main character needs to make money, so she'll go work at a Neko girl made uh, bar to make some extra money, and she'll pretend that uh, she's completely embarrassed and furious about having to work here, but maybe she secretly likes it. 
uh, that's a, that's the majority of the series is that kind of humor, and then little glimpses into the doujinshi world as she works. So, for example, she gets a rival. Uh, the main character's not a very good artist. Her rival's not a very good artist. So they're they're kind of they're kind of like in a furious combat to be the best worst comic artist they can possibly be. Another great uh, theme of the plot is, although she's not a very good artist, uh, because. Because what she draws is so perverted, and they never show up. By the way, they'll just show you a couple panels to imply what what's going on, but then they never like are in your face or graphic about what she's doing. But whatever she's drawing, it's so graphic that it just disgusts whoever looks at it. But because she's also a very bad artist, this kind of makes people start to get intrigued by her, and she actually starts building a following because people are sort of shocked by the uniqueness of how bad her art is and how raw whatever the whatever's going on in her ma manga art. So it's kind of this interesting theme where even if you're a bad artist, if you have a lot of commitment, maybe you can build an audience and make something of yourself. And she gradually starts to just fall in love with the doujinshi world and being a part of that community and learns less and less to worry about just making money uh, as being her only goal in life. So I guess the sum up is if you wanted to watch an anime that's to help you learn about the do the doujin market uh, like I was, don't then don't bother with this. <laughs> if, if you like uh, ironic uh, sexual humor where sexual humor is the central uh, appeal of the entire series, then I would say, yep, Go, go for doujinshi work. Uh, I, I, I would say I like it in the sense that I don't think it's promoting pedophilia or promoting uh, pornography. It's making light of how this is part of Japanese culture. So let's let's make light of how wildly inappropriate and weird it is that these weirdos exist in our culture. So that's my review of doujin work. Uh, <laughs> God, I feel bad even doing this review, but not, I, I watched it. Now you can decide whether you want to watch it or not based on that. Love you guys. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs>